Welcome to my messy life. Take my hand and dive right on in with me. It's gonna be alright. Messy and perfect life with Lee. It's Lee and Christy Lee. Boy, I'm not gonna sing. I hope you don't expect that. I do expect that. No, Christy, if Christy sings, show dies. Ask anyone. <laughs> Duly noted. Please I have don't live sing. Live shows to prove it. <laughs> um, live show. So, are you a? It's that when I read a little bio about you with the. Help me, because I'm going to the Bob and Tom show. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Because all of a sudden I panic. I'm going to flip it around, and my dyslexia is going to get in my mind somehow. And then I'm like, "What was it?" So, thank you for saying the Bob and Tom back. show. It said you were the producer on it. Then you got more and more talkative. What happened? No, I was never a producer. Did you get that off Wiki? Yeah, or I have Wikipedia it on a piece of paper or whatever the hell it is. No, I was never a producer. Um, I started uh, my radio career way back in high school and worked my way onto the Bob and Tom show in the mid 80s. I'm dating myself a little bit, but uh, I was their news person for a while. Um, I think my official title was news director. When the show went syndicated, we became a full-time four group. So it was Bob, Tom, myself, oh. and Chick. So now it's like, I call myself a co-host. That's one of the reasons I'm here today, because you wanted a messy thing. I got something messy, so. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I usually like to ease into the mess and feel it, but you brought it up. Do you well, because just... I'm an interviewer, too. You know how this Do goes. Do you want to just <laughs> dive into that no, now? No, we don't have to dive into it, but that's. But that's kind of, you know, that's my role now is more a news person slash female representative on the show slash co-host, cohort. I think we are more cohorts than hosts I like the, I like the word cohort. Yeah. That I feels chummy and fun. Yeah. Okay. Tell me what's messy. What It has to do with work, it sounds like. Well, no, you were telling me that, you know, your messy, imperfect life, which is hardly imperfect i look at you and think you have a perfect life isn't that funny <laughs> well that's too that's the whole facade right right of how we show up on instagram after i just cried for seven hours and my eyes went down i didn't look so puffy and i went next to my cute girls and it looks like a really perfect family how do you do that the other way i've been getting bags under my eyes lately i've never had that before well i had a thing <laughs> happen <laughs> recently well, a matter of fact, a few years back, my sister's like, when are you going to do something about your shelves? I was like, what are shelves? What are shelves? What are you talking about? And she's like, it's under your eye when it sinks in and you can <gasps> set like a vase there. And I was like, oh my God. And my other sister goes, yeah, you do have bad shelves and you have really dark circles. And that I just, every time I looked at myself in the mirror, I was like, I have black slugs under my, I mean, I have black indentions. Oh my gosh. Is this and, something and that, for me to worry about too now? Well, no, I worried oh. about it. And then I just did something about it. And I'm not <laughs> sure how I feel. <laughs> So anyway, they kept saying this and my kids were even going, mom, you look like you have black eyes all the time. So I went to the doctor and they said, maybe it's allergies. So I was taking algae pill and no squirt in the morning and at night mm -hmm. and they're still there. And then um, my, I asked my sister what she did and she said she put a little filler right under it, which brought this up or something like that. And it made it not such a cave in. I got it. Okay. So it was a filler. So I went and did the filler um, maybe three weeks ago. And I've had just a tiny bit here. I mean, it was like $100 because they put in so, so barely anything here and here. So it's kind of puffier now. No, I think it looks great. You do? Yes. I wouldn't have mentioned it if I didn't. No, really? Great. Yeah. Because this, I just, but then I found I had puffy black circles under my eyes. <laughs> they didn't go away. <laughs> this wasn't the mess we were so really going to talk about. puffy and I'm still caking on concealer no, under it. Thank you. No. Yeah, I have not done any official cutting or anything, but I have done fillers and oh. Botox. Yeah. Do you ever do that? No, look at me. I haven't done anything. Really nothing? No, I'll be 60 soon. I'm not giving up. Damn, girl, you look good. <laughs> what do you mean giving up? But you, you're you smooth here like I am, and I've had that stuff Plus in there. That's good Chanel concealer. I did the same thing. <laughs> Wow, you're going to be 60. Well, I have, I'll be 59 this month, but yeah, so in a year. Happy birthday to yeah, you. Yeah, thanks. If you have a big 60 party, especially if you go somewhere exotic, I want to come. Sure. We were just talking about this at um, lunch today. Um, my daughter's with me on this trip. We're supposed to be doing college visits. Look how this is going. <laughs> 
sometimes you have to pick more important things than your kids. Exactly. We did Disney all day yesterday, and now I'm at your house. (laughs) You have your priorities. Yes, I do. We're going to go see Spider-Man tonight, so it's been great. Um, Is that the animated one or the real one? The real one. It's yeah. Is it a new one? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it. Out. You're believe me, your girls are going to want to go because there's a cute boy. Oh, he is cute. I remember him from them. Yeah. So, um, no. Why? What were we talking about? This is the ADHD show. You look. Well, oh, my I'm medicine be should be kicking in any second. So we, I might get a grasp on my ADHD. Okay. I don't have the H part. I'm not hyper. Oh. I just can't stay focused. Oh, I am that way too. We, I think, yeah. Okay. Sure. So your face is smooth and your haircut's really darling and the color of it's darling. You look very youngish. Thanks. I feel youngish. I don't feel, and you and I, this is kind of how we bonded is over the fact that we had children late in life. So, you know, I have, uh, you know, a high, senior in high school still. When most of my friends are grandparents, which Isn't I that think funny? it helps. I think it really helps. I'll stay younger. Yeah. Don't you think? Oh, gosh. Yes. Because I, I think people get in the mindset as they, their kids mature, they mature mm-hmm. and their kids are off to college. Well, I guess this is a new phase of my life and I'm having really bad. What's it called when your kids leave empty nest syndrome and I feel depressed. And then it's kind of crawling out of heaviness into nothingness because you don't feel like you have anything set up or you have anything going. Well, then there's this other part of that coin because my youngest just got back. The other reason I'm here is I picked her up at the airport. She was in Thailand for three weeks doing a service project. The one that's here? Yeah, (gasps) Sophie. That's so cool. Yeah, so, um, and I wanted to kind of give her a break, you know, ease her back in the jet lag thing and we could do school visits and my friend Beth lives here and it's all Of course. Yeah, so... um, See, what now I'm doing the ADD thing. So I want to help you oh. get back on track. But I'm not sure when I oh, smile, it's a squirrel oh, in the, the corner. Easy, no, the easy, the um, empty nester thing. Yeah. So I was without kids for three weeks. I got to tell you, it was kind of fun. <laughs> well, that's because you have shit going on. Yeah, I do. You're not like, I'm lost right. now. I don't know who I am because I have given all of myself to my kids. I have no career, nothing going. Who am I? Yeah. Right? No, I have so, a new boyfriend too. That really oh helps Oh my too. gosh. Yeah. By the way... <laughs> So you and I, you and I correspond every once in a while, kind of out of the blue. And then we like each other's stuff. Right. So I went to peek at you. I think, I think after I saw you, I remember to get your ass in here. I was like, oh, I like her. Get her in here. (laughs) That's kind of how I do it. I'm just like, I noticed someone who was like, do you want to come on? And I noticed you with a really young, hot guy. He's not young. He's older than me. Is he really? Mm Because he looks fresh. Yeah. He's, he's special. He's a good one. He's a keeper. And when you say that, can I talk about how many times you've been married? Sure. Because it, it's in the Wikipedia, but they've got some things incorrect. Right. So, but I just read this morning while I was trying to do my background work. Yeah, don't do that. I know, I'm so bad. No, I don't do that either when I interview I people. I don't either because I just want to I want to know. You. And I want to feel and I want to get. Yes. It's because the people listening or watching don't know anything about me. Yeah. So if you don't know they anything, you can Google you're the gonna, shit that is on that paper. You can ask me what you think they might want to know. They're going to want to think. Yeah. But yeah. go ahead. So, it yes, like I've been married three times. Yeah. So, three times. So, that's a lot. Yeah. Now, how long were you married for the first time? A year. And oh, I was so that was really like a mistake, young. really young. I was young. 20. I just wanted out of the house and I didn't go to college. So it was a real, you know, this is, we we're talking about the messy life thing and we've bonded over our childhood things. And, you know, um, my mother is sweet as she is and I love her, but she struggled as a parent and wasn't the best. And I wanted out. I yeah. just wanted out. So that was, and then I was. And then we find our way out because we are is it called a fish or we can take care of ourselves. So we find a way out, even though it's not the best out. Right. We got out. We're not victims. And then all of a sudden you're like, Oh shit, I got here. I kind of want out again. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm one of those people who, if something's not working, I'm not staying. I have, I'm not, that sounds horrible, but I know that there's, there are other options. You don't have to be stuck somewhere. No. And I've, I've never been a stuck person. No. Ever. And I won't ever be a stuck You know what person. I do think about what you just said is that um, if things aren't, what? how did you phrase it? If things aren't going well yeah, or working out? Working out. So I, I've i thought about marriage as as soon as one partner sits down and you're no longer moving forward together. Because I do know in every relationship and every romantic or friendship, whatever, there's always going to be challenges. There's well, always going to be things. And I believe that our partner shows up to trigger what we still need to heal inside. So it's supposed to be like the safe space 
to work through your shit with this person that you love. So they can trigger your old hurts so you can heal and be free from them. Mm -hmm. As opposed to being a victim when you got them in your childhood. So you can free yourself through this stuff. So so often when people are like, it's not going well, I'm like, it's not supposed to go well. This is This is time like after the honeymoon to get to work on yourself. And that person reflects back where we need to work. So I kind of have that philosophy in it. 100% support divorce, especially when someone has sat down and they won't walk with you. You no longer have a partner to work with. Right. Or when you choose your partner because of past relationships or things that you know will trigger things that aren't going to work too. I, that doesn't sound like right. Like sabotage. I self-sabotage. Yeah. I had self-sabotaged for years and years and years. And I have been single now for 13 years. And um, my first two husbands... Husbands, this sounds horrible. Wait, wait. I look bad on paper, but I'm really not. No, um, she's precious. I'm not. My first two husbands, I didn't have children with. My last one was my keeper guy. And, you know, I had kids with him and I thought everything was great. And then, boom, things weren't good. Um, and things, It got messy. It got real got messy. messy. It got as like messy. Like drugs and alcohol or cheating or. Cheating jail. It got as messy as it can possibly get. Until it, you have to call it a day. Until you have to look at things and go, this is not right. With that said, I will tell you, he's been a great dad. He cleaned himself up. Things are good. Are you he's saying this now because you know your daughter's going to be watching? No. I mean, we're still friends. I yeah, mean, yeah, we, yeah. In fact, the four of us have vacationed together in the last couple of years. So, oh, I think that's nice. Yeah. So, I mean, it went from being the worst time of my life, literally, mm. to, I see why that happened now. Yeah. Because had things not changed and had that path continued, my kids, and this is the most important thing, our kids, I shouldn't just say mine. I always do that too. My but kids. our kids would not be the kids they are, the girls they are today. I have two two daughters and I'm not bragging, but with what they've been through and what you know, being a single mom from the time they were, you know, two and six, they are damn good kids. Yeah. And I really don't know how they would have turned out had that you situation. Well, even if we'd stayed together, it's hard to explain. No, I think you were going to say before I interrupted you that had, what were you going to say if you stayed together and they were a family? It's it just would have more of a disservice than right. letting it be what happened. Right. Is that right? Yeah, pretty much. I think we did the kids a service by splitting up. I know that sounds crazy. No, that, but that sounds true to me. I really because believe so that. Because so often parents say, we're staying together for well, 10 more years till that one graduates high school. And I'm right. like, so everyone's going to suffer for 10 more years? That's not a damn thing healthy about that. No. And then- And you're modeling how to, for your children, how to- um, roll over, how to give up, how to live in out of happiness, how to not be in your joy. Right. You're showing you how mediocrity, 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 that it, mediocrity. Thank you. Yes. Can look. Well, and that's the other thing. I, you only get this life once. 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 Who wants to, I see it all the time. I know you do. You see people, if I eat out a lot because I'm not a very good cook. We eat out a lot. And you see that couple or those people who are just sitting at the table that look like zombies. And you're thinking, oh my gosh. I would rather. This is your only shot at life. Yeah. And this is how you're choosing to live it? Yeah. I don't get that. You know what? People don't get it until they wake up to that idea or that thinking or something that rattles them. Otherwise, you sleepwalk. Most people sleepwalk through life. And I don't understand that philosophy. I I know there are people that can't or they think they can't get out of situations and there are horrible situations out there. Trust me, I know. But man, there's a- There's so much fun to be had. Oh, and there is always a way. I really believe always. that. Always. I didn't grow up six- I mean, I grew up in a trailer park. I'll talk about that. You did? Hell yeah. Wow. My parents divorced when my mom was- Or when my mom- When I was 12 and my sister and I <laughs> and my mom lived in a trailer home. And that's so funny. It was two girls and your mom, yeah, two and girls then, and you. Yeah. It was very, very weird. Things repeat itself. Yes. But I'm just saying like passed down for generations. But I'm what I'm hearing from you is you're not in a trailer. No. And you've broken a lot of the cycles that you were exactly. given. Exactly. And I swore I would always do that. I swore I knew when I was in the trailer home, 
I was never, all I could think of was, I can't wait till I have bricks around me. Yeah. I mean, that sounds silly, but I wanted a home with bricks. Now I have a home that doesn't have bricks. <laughs> with what? No, it doesn't have bricks. I have an old farmhouse, so it's like that clapper and siding or whatever. But it's funny to me. I wanted a home that didn't and have wheels on it. And bricks feel like a solid foundation. Exactly. And I'm from the Midwest and I live in the Midwest. So to us, I know out here in sunny California, bricks aren't as, you know, but as uh, yeah quick as a, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, never mind. Anyway. <laughs> I should have taken some medicine too. I'm from the Midwest too. Yeah. So I'm Kansas City. And we're I'm in Indiana, Indianapolis. Okay. Anyway, yeah, that's where I grew up. That's where I currently have chosen to live due to my kids and my job. And so you never left there. I mean, I know you left left for a little bit. I lived in New Mexico for a while. Ooh, where? Yeah. I lived in Albuquerque. Okay. And that was a very growing experience. Um, it was in the mid eighties, but um, yeah, basically, I've always been in indie. Were you doing cocaine in the mid '80s? No, I wasn't a. Drunk you never got girl. into that. Not really. P- smoking pot? No, I've never been a girl. What the hell's your vice? Uh, I drink cocktails. Oh, That's a good yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> That's mine too. Yeah, everybody goes. How do you deal with Tom? That's the guy I work with. If you're a Bob and Tom fan, you know what I'm talking about. They'll go, how do you deal with that? And I go, I drink a lot. Yeah. That's why I have a really poochy little stomach right now, which I'm covering with this I'm glad you have that little it's been decorative a great pillow. vacation. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been a great year, actually. Um, but Because yeah, of your drink. new lover? Yeah. I mean, of course. You know what that's Gosh, like. Gosh, that, that feels nice, right? But we're getting back to this, back yeah. to bad relationships and, you know, how you... And we talk about, Bill and I talk about this all the time. Because he's had a history as well. And you get to our age and this point in life, and it's amazing because everything that happened all led up to this. I and love it's that. so great that we can talk about things and we we get it. We don't we don't stress about the little stuff. We don't if we have an issue, we bring it up. We don't pretend it's gonna go away. Now we in the past, have you faked orgasms? Oh, yes, of course. A lot, right? Like a Oh, ton. God, yes. Absolutely. Like almost my whole sexual career. Yeah, if women been... don't say they don't, they're lying, I think. Yeah, or, because at some point. I'm always like, it's going to take me so long. And, and I don't want to have that much time, time. And I want to just get to it. You can feel satisfied. And I'll just do something later to myself. So my question is, with this new guy who's foxy, I saw his photo. And you said that you're kind of open and you know what you want. You don't get... Do you, are you sexually um, open and talk about it? Like, you know, oh, yeah, absolutely. You know what I really like? Could you move your hand that way just a little bit more? Like that kind of stuff? We're adults, of course. No, no, that's not an of course. Well, I'd like to think that Some most people, people are still a little repressed there. Yeah, I feel bad for them too. Yeah, so you talk openly about it. Absolutely. Isn't that nice? Yes. Because then you can have your needs met. Yes. With however that is, whether right. it's outside stimulation or a sex toy or something. Or if, if, one of us isn't feeling like it that day. That's okay. Yeah. It's okay. We don't have to take you it know, personal. You don't like me. No, exactly. <laughs> I'm unworthy and unwanted. Oh, and I've been, again? Again. I've been there. <laughs> that's a big one. Yeah. That's, yeah, of well, I course. Think, I think that's most of our stories we overcome as, as unworthiness. Well, and we had this conversation the other day because I triggered something. I call it, he has past girlfriend PTSD and he really does. He has a girl that really kind of effed him up a little bit. And so- things will happen that'll trigger him and he'll go, I will not tolerate. And I said, time out. When you say I will not tolerate, I hear I'm leaving because I've done something that is so bad. He can't tolerate it. He's gone yeah. because of my issues. Yeah. But we're able to talk about that. And so now we call it, um, maybe we should present that differently. So if I see something wrong or, or something that, could you present that a little differently? <laughs> In wording that doesn't make me think you're going to run the fuck out. Right. So that's kind of become a, a neat way that's of dealing That's so something. neat. Yeah, because in other relationships, I would have never said anything. I would have let that go. I would have been like, oh my God, what have I done wrong now? And walked on eggshells and it's not worth it. Life's not worth that. It's If I could teach my girls anything at an early age about relationships is to be as open and honest and don't hold anything in as you possibly can. Yes, because, because the person wants to really know you. And yes. if you're withholding, you're withholding from the relationship and from yourself from being really known and feeling worthy that all of you is exactly 
what he's attracted to. And you're not, it's not going to be a real relationship. And it's not going to go well in the end. I really believe that. Yeah. And so just be honest with yourself, with your person. Because if that person doesn't accept you the way you are like that, then you don't want to be there. Right. There are other, believe me, there are other fish in the sea. It might take a while to catch one. But <laughs> Keep on throwing that reel. That's right. With a lot of sweet ass bait. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, my, my daughter right now is having a little bit of the opposite. So uh, my story was unworthiness. And I passed a little bit that down onto her. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. But no, it's just a little bit. We had my first kid got all the attention and she didn't get as much. So her interpretation was, I I'm don't not really as matter. As her. Yeah, I don't matter. Or my mom doesn't care about me as much or whatever. Um, so she is, is kind of dealing with that. And I think a little bit, she's kind of like this a little bit because of it. As I was a full armor running fast and hard and just make out and run. I didn't want to mm -hmm. know your name. But she like really liked this guy and he was from France and he was like a year or two older than her. I met him just precious. And so, you know, engaging with me and listening, you know, and interested in family, like that kind of stuff, not just wanted to come try and make out there and, and right. leave, but he really listened to her. And one night she drank a little too much and he was like, let's talk about this. Why'd you, you know, what's going on that you did that? Because I hate to see you that way. Like he cared about her. And she was like, oh, he's out. <laughs> but she couldn't handle that confrontation. No, that... I think more that I see you and I like you. Because uh... she's used to just having cocktails and going, hey, you yeah. know, and, and trying to find her way and getting ready to leave my house kind of thing. Just trying on some different hats. Sure. Um, and he was really gentle with her and saw her and, and loving to her. And I think that that felt overwhelming for her. Oh, well, she'll grow into it yeah. when she's ready. But I'm like, she's not ready. No, she's not ready. And she has to go. I mean, I had to go through 23 hardcore years of living unworthiness mm -hmm. by making out and running fast and never crying. And I didn't need anyone and doing drugs and all of that until I met Dave. And I was so freaking tired. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. I, I began melting mm -hmm. that thought I'd been holding that I was unworthy or alone or all those things. So I see her doing it not as bad as me, thank God. But um, I see it. And I just said, just know he's being tender with you. And I know that feels overwhelming. And that's going to make you want to flee every time someone does until you know that you are worthy of being tender towards. And you can return that. Yeah. Yeah, you can accept it. Right. And you can return it. Yeah. It's funny because I'm at, you know, I have a 20, almost 21 year old daughter as well. And to see her go through, she's only had one boyfriend. But it's so different than what you and I experienced because I was the same way. I mean, I was, you know, the reason I got married a lot or dated a lot is because I never felt like I was ever loved. And so I was looking for love in anywhere, anywhere that anybody yeah. looked my way. I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, I love you too, you know. So um, and it's so the only one of the things about breaking the cycle, so to speak, was the way she handled her boyfriend and the way she said, I won't let you treat me like this. I will not be, I deserve better. And if you can't, and she didn't. And I was like, I would never have been that girl. At 19, so early. 20. That's great. Oh my God. I stood back and I went, if I've done nothing right in my life, I did right by her doing. And, and you know what? Part of that is her seeing how you navigated when the marriage broke up and the stuff that went down. You drew a line. You made a separation. You made a break. However, it happened. And you're happy and you're free and you're doing what you love and you met a cute guy. So she can see from this mess can still be happiness in a career. And yeah, a but it guy. took a long time for that to happen. I know. A and long I time. I know. <laughs> I know for she myself as well. Like my lessons are like, oh, that one was 14 years for me to get. The last one was three hard years for me to get. You know, it's that, that same kind of thing. But I do know that I'm getting more aware of shortening the gap. Between Learning quicker. Victim. <laughs> Yeah, between going, oh my God, I can't believe it happened yeah. to. All right, this happened. The mess is always coming. What can I learn from it? How can I move through it gracefully and being gentle with myself and get out on the other side wiser? And what make do that you do to, to be gentle to yourself? Um, when I'm bawling really hard for the fifth day in a row, mm -hmm. instead of going, fucking get a hold of yourself. Are you not over this yet? Calm down. I just go. And w one of my favorite ways is really realizing that we all came with our needs not met, our younger self, right? Mm. Because we were raised by humans who can't be perfect. Sure. And they give us the stuff that starts covering our light. 
so we have something to work through, right? To overcome. I forgot what I was going to say. How, I'm, I'm saying, I asked you how you- Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Are gentle to yourself. Yeah. This so is here's one of my favorite ways is knowing that there's this little girl inside of me who didn't have her needs met and kind of watching a pattern over the years with me is like when something good starts to happen, I'll do something to derail it, whether it's something with relationship or it's a career was big for me. Like mm -hmm. just when I was about to step out, I would like get drunk and then act a fool at a camp that they wanted me to come speak at. <laughs> and they're like, mm, maybe we should revisit this. I'm like, okay. But you know what I mean? It's like, why did I get drunk at that? What was it? And I realized that inside of me is that little girl who didn't have her needs met who feels you're not going to do this to me. You're not going to tell me what to do. You know, I don't need you. That kind of like reactive thing. Mm -hmm. So I have all these spiritual tools. And then all of a sudden I'm like overly mad about something that doesn't match what happened or super hurt without even talking to someone because I'm spinning some bullshit story. It's triggering my old, you know? So I just realized like, oh, I can go in there when I feel crying or I feel upset or I start to judge myself. Go, no, because I believe that healing is applying loving to the places that hurt inside. Mm -hmm. so with me, it always seems to be attached to my younger self. And she didn't have attention for a long ass time. Now I'm giving it to her now. So she can kind of meld into me as opposed to fight for her time kind of within me, which causes conflict and, and suffering for me. So anyway, when I get really pissed or I get really sad, I say, instead of saying, I should be doing something different, say, no, you're doing exactly what you need to right now. This is a part of what you need to do to get through whatever it is. This is how you need to handle it, whether it's 14 years of learning or suffering and learning, um, or it's faster now. But uh, I just, I allow myself to hurt. I allow myself, and I want to start beating myself up or judging. I just say, no, no thanks right now. I got you. You're okay. And sometimes I close my eyes and I picture, I picture me when I was younger that I like, or I could see my spunk, but I knew I was in the thick of things. Mm -hmm. And I just picture her and go in there and see her and just say, I got you. You're okay. Everything's okay. Because I figure when this is stuff like this, I'm like this, it's hurting in here. So that's one way to be gentle with myself. Instead of going, oh, here I go again, fucking this up. <laughs> you know? I doubt that you do that. Oh, <laughs> I do. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing it less and less the more I wake up and the more aware I am. I tend to take so much stuff personally. That's my goal right now that I'm really trying to overcome. I take oh, everything personally. That's so tiring. It is tiring. It is it's so tiring. tiring. And it's like, it, but it gets back to the, um, the I was never good enough little girl, you know, like the same thing. I was never good enough. I was never good enough. And even though, damn, I know I'm good enough. Why do I continue to Because do little that? Christy- is getting triggered yeah. by whatever's presenting. You're in our adult. I mean, I use the example of a, I'm sitting on the bench in a park and a really stunning, polished, put together woman passes, just beautiful. And I'm like, wow, she's beautiful. And I'm like, and she kind of glances and just keeps walking. And my voice says, wow, she's so above your league. She's so good. She couldn't even look at you. Like you're just like a frump sitting on. Like, this is what my voice says. Yep. <laughs> but if you step out of your voice, the reality is a pretty woman walked by. She probably didn't even notice you because she was thinking about 18 different things. Yeah. yeah. And she walked by is all she did. Yeah. All the rest I made up. Yep. And I'm suffering because of some stupid thought I'm holding about a beautiful sight I saw. Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's, and I think that's a lot of our little girl. Like, stuff happens and we get like, we say, oh, I'm not good enough. Or, oh, I, I'm not going to look at her next time. A uh, trigger for me is I have to do a lot of big, I'm on a couple of boards. I'm not bragging, but I'm on a couple no, of- No, that's bragging. You're on yeah, boards. I'm on boards. I'm on boards. And Normally that means you have a lot of money. No, I don't have a lot of money. I have a lot Influence. of friends who have money. That's the key. Yeah. So, um, but I have to do a lot of social events and those mean you have to, grow, you know, dress up and, you know, every time, and this is, this will make you giggle probably, but I'm almost 60 years old and every time I get ready for a black tie event, I A, think- why am I dressing up? I'm a little kid. What am I doing? I don't belong at these events. That's exactly how I feel. Yes. I feel like I'm some kid dressing up, going to an event she has no business at. I grew up in a trailer park. I didn't even know what fork to use. For so your many, younger many years. self does My that younger every self, time. Every time. Remember. And you ask Bill, because Bill has to go to these events with me now, and he'll call, he calls it event anxiety. And he'll go, look, 
how much of an anxiety is this one going to cause? Because I do, I get, why am I with these people? I don't belong here. I'm dressed up. Like I shouldn't be wearing I'm playing a part. It's not me. Yes. It's silly. It's so ridiculous. No, I remember the first time I wore reddish lipstick, I was like, I'm playing in my mother's makeup. Yes. Everyone's going to look at me and start laughing. (laughs) I shouldn't be wearing this. I I just wear a clear lip gloss. Did you see? I have red lipstick in my bag because it matches my glasses. People tell me, oh, it looks so good. And I'm like, I'm not putting that on today. Uh, (laughs) Nope, I'm not going to do that. But it's funny. It's so funny what our mind tells us and none of it's real. I know. Because you do belong there. Why? Because you're there. And, And why do we do that? I mean, why... Do we allow that? And I'm like you. I'm trying to be more gentle on myself. And I know better. I, you know, both of us and then, know then, better. This is another good example of how you can be gentle with yourself in the moment. So you're getting ready and all of a sudden you have that thought and you say, hi, thought. So often I jump my fingernails in and ride you, but I'm just going to let you pass because you no longer serve me or because that's my younger self who wants to derail me. Then you can just do a quick pop and I got you. Everything's good. Let me take care of this party. You just get to go along for the ride. I mean, just those little tiny things. I think when we hear the voice that that screws us, Mm -hmm. then just talking to it, saying, hey, not today. And I think a lot of people are probably surprised by this. They're probably, because if they see me at an event, you know, they're all like, Oh my God, you Mrs. look beautiful. Mrs. Popular's here. You did She's great. a star. She's I'm not a star, but. You- I said you were a freaking star. Know, just whatever. take it. Okay. Thank you. Thank um, you. But you know, and they'll, you know, I end up in the paper or whatever and, oh God, I loved your dress. And I'm thinking, why did I get so worked up? Why for- didn't I, why didn't I own my space? I don't own my space. It's That's, right. it's that owning funny? your space. I know. There's a. I don't know. That's what I love. This is the mess, right? Yeah. It's that's like you what are attractive. About. You're funky. You're spicy. You're feisty. You're sexy. You're all of these things. You're in the public eye. People look at you and they're like, she has everything. Oh, now she has a hot boyfriend. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> and men keep loving her, right? Aww. Some people hope for one husband. You're like, what's, what's next? No, I don't. Not really, but people <laughs> perceive. Right. Like you perceive me or people see pictures of me and think my life's great. And actually, it is topsy-turvy as hell right now. And I'm not even into fully sharing about all the details of what it is yet because I'm waiting till it's the right time. But last year was a train wreck. Worst year of my life. And I just remember like, what? I thought I did all this work to get here. Why is it crumbling? You know, it's just like all this. And then I had horrible. And then this year I stood up and I was like, okay, what I thought was my foundation crumbled, but I'm still standing. Right. So I can let go of that thought of what I thought right. life was being step into what is waiting for me. Right. So your foundation is changing. Yeah. 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 And just when you think, it's like, oh, And sometimes when we keep holding on so hard, it can't just gracefully change, right? right? It's like, oh, shit, I guess I have to completely shatter all of it so she can look and see she's still standing. Like, I had to have that happen where I hit my rock bottom of trying to keep it all together, make things different than it was. Instead of just going, oh, wow, things are changing and accepting it as it came. Like Byron Katie talks about that, being at peace with what is. Right. And it's just instead of going, why is this happening? It's happening because it's happening. Can I feel pain from it? Sure. Do I have to suffer from it? No. I love that differentiation between pain and suffering. Pain is inevitable. Right. But suffering is what we do after we got the pain. How long are we going to hold the pain after the event has not happened, after it stopped a year ago? We're still holding that pain. I mean, I did that for 23 years, pointing at my mom, mm-hmm. who made me my life bad because she did something I thought was wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we have so much suffering. And it's like, I'm the one, I love just the analogy too of I'm the one getting burned when I hold the hot coal. I'm suffering. No one else is. That's my mom's ex- eating bonbons watching a TV show. That's exactly right. And that you, I, I do the exact same thing. That's so funny you would bring that up because it's like, who the the person that is allegedly making my life miserable has no idea. They don't care. They have no they, no clue. They no did clue. whatever they did. They walked yeah, on. They're they kicking don't it here, and you're suffering. And you're and they're you're no. Don't let that happen. Yeah. yeah, God, it's so easy to say, isn't it? Or that famous phrase, "Live in the moment." Uh, well, I have to tell you what. If you can get in the moment, even for a mi- minute, I know it's awesome. Oh my gosh! I why? Know. Why? Maybe. That's why you meditate. I meditate because this, yes, is all we have. This right. is the only moment that exists. Right. 
The past is a memory. Yep. It's not real. Right. The future is non-existent. Yeah. This is all we have. I know. And when we live anywhere else, we're actually causing ourselves anxiety and suffering and worry and because we're missing what life is. Especially when you're friendship. Friendship. <laughs> no, it's true. You're it right. And, but it so many people say that phrase and don't know what to do about it or how to do it or to How do you get in the moment? Um, I do try to meditate and I do try to stop myself and you know for example we were at disney yesterday oh that's a great place to not be in the moment <laughs> you're like, exactly the hell, right the stinky people in the lines oh are too my long. gosh and we had but my youngest daughter my kids love disney it's their thing they go all the time and to come out here we usually disney, disney world's closer but to come to disneyland is a big deal and they so anyway we had reservations at 10 o'clock at night to go into the cantina at Galaxy's Edge, which just opened last week. Nice. Well, it opened on the 28th or whatever. And I, the line was long. And I looked at Sophie and I'm like, there's no way we're getting in there. I'm tired. We've been here since 9 o'clock this morning. Oh. I was just... Dee, 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 dee. She goes, Mom, we don't have to go. And I could see she was just saying that to make me feel better. And then she goes, why are you being so pessimistic? And in reality, it took maybe 10 minutes to get through the line. So in reality, I was creating a story of that wasn't happening. It was like instead of in living head. in the moment and going, oh, this could be fun. And I know you're getting enjoyment out of it. And, you know, it won't take that long. And being positive, I immediately, and this is going to be, I jumped to my mother. My mother was that way. Yeah, impatient. You know, impatient. You know, I don't have time for this. You know, we're wasting my time. That's where you see how that's all in us. So it's like what you feed grows, but you can still see with little reactions like that. Right. That, oh, she still exists in there. Those things I picked up from her. I'm just not living from them. Right. But it's so neat to start having awareness of our stuff because then it's like a fascinating. You're like your own project. When I can kind of observe myself or I'm talking like this a moment and I'm, just, and I'm like, wow, you are really out of whack. What's going on? Yeah. What? But to be able to stop and go, I want to live this through her eyes because this is what she loves and oh. adores. And I'm in the moment now for her. You know, I rode right yesterday that I normally would. I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. No. But I knew it was important to her. And the joy that she got from it made me feel so good. Oh. But that to me helps me get in the moment sometimes when I'm like thinking of, Oh, the lines are long and put yourself and in someone else's shoes. And it's shoes. like, yeah, it's like, but I know this is so important to her. And that's so beautiful because I mean, that would help me at Disneyland. <laughs> when my kids so... are like, please, can I do it again? Please, please. I'm like, no, I'm just standing here getting freaking sunburned. Can we find a ride with no shade? Because I'm not going on that shit. Yeah. Single rider. That's the key. <laughs> yeah. We do do that too. I remember when I made all my kids do single rider on the cars. <laughs> And there's like a two hour wait yep. for families, whatever. We went up to single rider and then Eve's like six. I'm like, go on, kid, enjoy the ride. She goes, wait, I'm going up. <laughs> yep, buckle up with those two men. You know, but I just. Well, it's independence. They got to learn it. Uh -huh. I was like, yeah. chop, chop. I'll be here. Let me actually let me go first. So when you get off, I could be waiting for you. Sure. There's that. Yeah. Yeah. But it was just funny. I thought I was being efficient. And all of a sudden, I see the terror in a six-year-old's <laughs> eyes getting all with stranger. <laughs> Yeah, but living in the moment is important. And when you ask me, I do try to meditate and I do. I How and, do you and, meditate? What do you do when you do? I Well, I get a lot of time in the mornings by myself because I work early. So I'm home by 10, 30, 11. So my, I would say from 11 to 2 is kind of mommy's time. Oh, my that's time. nice. Um, and if I'm, you know, I work out. So I like to do that. I like to walk. I like to be in nature. I love to walk. I, I have a dog like you. I have a little golden doodle named Leo and he and I spend a lot of time together and I have flowers in my garden and I love being outside. Oh. And so I get that enjoyment. You guys, out outside that. is key. Outside is huge. To hear the birds chirp oh. or to hear anything. Yeah. The rustling of the trees, to see a flower, to see a butterfly. Yes. I love to all notice that. that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's cool too. The more attention you pay, the more things you see kind of similar. Oh, there's that hummingbird again. I wonder what hummingbird means if you keep saying it. I love And my you look it up and you're like, that's exactly what I needed to lift me up. Like nature is giving you constant uh, connection. I'm a big um, introvert, which a lot of people don't understand. And if you're not an introvert, you don't understand. I can be out all the time and be social and, you know, do my thing. But man, I got to have my downtime and I have to be by myself. 
it's really important to me um, to be. That's different than an introvert. I is think. that an extrovert? No, or... an extrovert is is that you're social and all that no. stuff. But I think an introvert means that you are reclusive. I am. I get that way. But I think quiet time is a gift. It's like the, one of the most beautiful things you can give yourself in self care. Yeah, but a lot yourself. of people don't understand that too. But so it, it's, mine's it's a positive... forced upon me because I'm such an introvert that I have to be away. Like I have to go away. I have to recharge and be away from people and you know, just be, be, just be. That's a gift because I don't have that. I always want to be out touching people, really? mixing it up and kicking it. But I desperately need the quiet time and to meditate and get, because that's where you connect to who you truly are, not this crazy ass bullshit. Yeah. So when I don't do that, I'm crazy. What do you do to meditate? Um, I usually, at nighttime, I put on insight timer mm -hmm. and then I'll touch something about sleep and the amount of time I want. And then I hit most top rated and I just pick one of the top ones. And, you know, a lot of times it'll be like an hour long one, but wow. I'll just put it in and fall asleep. And then I'll wake up with my ears hurting and just pull up my earbuds yeah. while I'm sleeping. Yeah. But I do that to fall asleep with some affirmations and that kind of fill myself up with good. And then um, my meditation is usually insight timer. If I'm feeling stressed or insecure or rushed or anxious, you can pick anxious, the same kind of thing with the highest rated. Or I do the Deepak Oprah meditations. I bought a mm -hmm. bunch of those. Yeah. Yeah. I and love music too. Music's very meditative for me. People do music. I don't play it. I mean, I, don't, I wish I could. I wish I was a musician, but I'm very big into instrument, like classical music. Yeah. Or a really soft jazz or something that just, it instantly calms me. Like the spa channel on Sirius XM, if you have it. Yeah. Just instantly calms me down, I think. There's just something about music that's very calming for me like what about water oh i love that too like yeah pouring into something or yeah that i do that for going to bed at night sometimes on that whatever that app's called the yeah. calming app or whatever yeah. and I, i'll listen to the ocean it's, i don't have the ocean in the midwest yeah so i have to listen to the ocean app and it has little birds and you can hear that water I like coming in that it's very relaxing i can meditate to that when it's like crickets and birds and whatever mm -hmm. um and I can also do it. I'm getting better and better at just putting my feet on the ground, closing my eyes and breathing and focusing on my breath. Breathing's important. Because then I don't have to have a gadget. I like to do that. Yeah. I try to, to fill the better. sun on my face and put my feet on the ground and just am focusing on my breath. What I like about the breathing is if you focus on it, your mind can't spin because we are breathed automatically. The minute we put attention to it, it stops this crazy ass shit. So it's like if you even want a quick break, before you go to a meeting or you're nervous about talking to someone about something uncomfortable, you just instantly your mind stops because you can't focus on your breath and your mind. That's what I think the magic and meditation is. It's free and it's that simple. Turning your mind off is a real big deal. I wish I could do that for friends. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'd like to help you turn your mind off. Well, you know, people like that, that just don't stop. Yeah. They can't shut off. They can't shut their mind down. They don't sleep well. They don't, I have friends like that, and I really, really wish that I could help them because, man, it's a gift. Well, it's all related, too. It's like people, I was at a friend's house last night whose stomach was hurting, and his back was hurting, and it's all for this tension he's holding, and I was like, I tried to do, I did Reiki on him, because mm -hmm. I got trained in Reiki, so I was doing Reiki on him, and I was like, wow, like normally I can feel some energy and some movement. It was just like lead, Ooh. and then I was just like holding above his body, just feeling how heavy it was and going, of course he, his back and stomach hurt. Of course he has a hip replacement. You know, it's like all of these things that you're holding in your body, they have to get out. People get ticks. I talked to someone, I was talking to someone with a tick the other day oh, in their no. eye and they were just telling me how hard something had been for them, but you know, they worked through it. And I said, you know, when you really work through it all the way, that's going to stop because that's your body's still trying to release this energy that doesn't feel like when you get in disease, you get disease. It's like when your body's tweaking or hurting. Like I had pulled my rotator cuff or whatever, Ouch. tore it. And I did, in finishing six weeks of physical therapy and then seeing if I have to have surgery. But I was like, no, I'm going to be healed from that, but it still hurts here. But I've got another six weeks coming, which I'm happy about. But I'm getting stronger. But I know that was a manifestation of the stress and pain I went through last year and the suffering that I imposed upon myself by holding on to this thought. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and literally it ripped my arm out, but I couldn't pick the time. I actually did this like big sports injury. 
Like, was it doing yoga when I was tired? Like, I couldn't pick what it was, but it hurt so damn bad. I couldn't even turn or raise my arm. Uh, but, you know, that was a manifestation of how my body was feeling. Like, it has to come out somehow yeah. if we don't listen. I re- That's the other thing. People don't listen to themselves. Yeah. They don't. They rush to a doctor and say, help me. What Give me that? a pill. Yeah. I tried that. Can I have a pill, please? <laughs> I don't want to do my work anymore. I just want to numb the fuck out. All my friends are on Xanax. Could I have a Xanax, please? She was like, no, you can't. Are your like, friends, screw you. Are a lot of your friends on Xanax, really? Yeah. That's sad to me. It really is. I don't have judgment on anyone anymore for anything because anytime I do, whatever it is comes into well, my face. Well, that's true. To I'm give not me the judging. Opposite. I'm just... I don't even have sadness. I have an understanding of why they might be on it. Mm-hmm. And um, I just try my live my my life so well and share it with them that they can see you can have it without it as much as I want to join them. Yeah. Oh, and occasionally yeah, ask me. to borrow one yeah. with a couple of swigs of wine. <laughs> Could I have half? My mom's coming over. <laughs> oh, I'm not judging. I just... It is fun. I mean, it's not fun, but it is exciting to know that I can numb out when I want to. My hope is one day I won't need to, that I'll just go within and, and comfort myself. But right now I'm like, I could have a martini with blue cheese stuffed olives, please, straight up. Yeah. But is that bad? That's not bad. No, I, I really like it. It's yeah. bad when I have a couple <laughs> and I have a couple, to, you know, I have too many and I'm going through a hard time. Then I'm a hot mess. Do you ever wake up the next day and go? Yes. Whatever you're going to say, yes. Oh God, what did I say? What did I do? Do you ever do that? Mm-hmm. Even sober, I do that. Yeah. Oh, because I've I've had those moments, like when you're drunk. Well, yeah, like the next day, going because I don't drink well. Who and do so I have I get, to apologize to? Yes, exactly. Or did I say something stupid? Or and I always get no. You're such a cute drunk. Don't worry about it. But oh, you know, I'm we always did. It. And you know, <laughs> if we saw a video back of ourselves, we mm-hmm. would be mortified. But man, it was fun at the so time. So fun! It makes so <laughs> much sense. I always do the splits. Yes. Every I time know I you do. Up, I just yes, do the splits. I know. And sometimes I'm in a place where I shouldn't probably be doing the splits, but I don't give a shit. It's <laughs> what I do. But that's what I was so attracted to you at the very first time I met you was the fact that you are all out there and you don't care what people think of you. And I love that energy. I loved your spirit. I loved how I wanted to be more like that. God, I wish I could be more like that. More self-confident and just... You don't like it? F you. I'm this is who I am, man. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a combo. And I appreciate you saying that. And I remember when you said that to me at the beginning, you said such sweet things. Like so often you do whatever you do and no one says shit. And then you were saying such nice things to me. I was like, oh, but it's it so wonderful to be seen and to have that positive affirmation. So but I that's just how really that's, appreciate it. I love that. And I love you. And I think that that's wonderful that you have. So when you sit here and tell me you have this messy thought process in your head. It's one of those things where like, I cannot believe she's saying these I things. I know. The thing is, is I always do whatever it is anyway. So when my fear says you're not good enough or you shouldn't be doing that or sit down and don't, I'm like, shut up. I just go do it. Now I use fear as a friend saying you're on the right path because we should be uncomfortable. Like life happens outside of our comfort zone. Yeah. Not sitting down doing the same shit every day. True. So, what, what are you afraid of? Um, I think I'm afraid of. Well, are you talking about like in, physically? Well, I'm not I mean, afraid of much in the in the world. I mean, maybe, you know, something bad happened or someone came to do something well, bad to me. I mean, do you have a fear like, I don't know. Yeah, give me an example. Um, my yes. fear would all come out of my not my uh, not being worth, feeling worthy. Okay. So that would be the fear that would say, you can't do this. What are you thinking? Sit your ass down. These people have been doing it forever. Who are you to do it? Right. All of that. I think that that's pretty, yeah, that's common one of mine too, I think. But what are you fearful of? Honestly, that I don't have enough time to do all the things I want to do. When you get to be 60 ish, you start thinking, shoot, you know, because I feel like I'm 30, but I don't have 50 years. I to feel live. like I'm 32 in that yeah. arena. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't have 50 years. And you look at things and you're going, oh my gosh, theoretically, I've got 20 good years, maybe. And if you look back, 20 isn't a lot. It's like, that's not enough. So that's kind of what I fear so, anymore. That's my big. I would like to offer you a little gift if you are up for it. Sure. I would love to gift you a couple of hours with me via Zoom mm-hmm. um, to actually 
pull out what you want to do, prioritize it, and then make a game plan in your schedule, a routine that feels right for you in the time you have free to accomplish that thing. But I don't want to do anything. <laughs> well, great. So we are just going to have a lot of brainstorm time. I don't know what it is. I really... You do. Here's what's cool. What I know spiritually is you do know what it is. And our thoughts say, I don't know, because this is where my comfort is. And if I keep doing this, I don't really have to do anything. I can just mm -hmm. bitch and moan about it and hope for something different. But we're born with every single thing we need to know for our entire life inside of our body, including all the sperm we need and all the eggs. We're born with it. So we're born with this treasure inside of us that we can't tap into because our stories tell us we can't tap into it. Too busy. Mm -hmm. Too much going on. Not enough time. Reality is you do know what you're dream is whether it's to write a book or it's to whatever it is whatever it is have your own show or have your oh you do you have your I, well I did well no I mean that's that was a dream that's over but well we could resurrect one no I just I, I mean it's it's not something that it I don't need that right now yeah. in my life it's like that's a good thing to say need because I only do things that fill me with joy. Yes. So when I think, what fills me with joy? This would fill me with freaking joy. And I have not accomplished it yet. So yes. that can be the thing I'm going to work towards. So I did my little vision board over there. See, I have one section oh, yeah. travel. One says, it used to say career, but I changed it to entrepreneur. I love entrepreneur. That's a good one. And then it says beach house. Yeah. And I put photos of what that's going to look like and how it's going to look. And then I picked just one of them, the, the entrepreneur business. And made this, oh my gosh, I have these four workshops. Maybe just check them out and see if it sparks anything in you. They're each one hour. Mm -hmm. and the first one is doing a vision board. I give you an instruction paper thing and then you watch the video and do it with us. And then you find like vision board, that, that word to me sounded so sick and stale and like woo woo and like I'm too cool and tough for that. And then I did that. I was like, oh my gosh, I got to take this, the beautiful things I desire in my head and bring it into real life like right now that's real life i can mm -hmm. see it it's tangible and then i the next one is an ideal scene around entrepreneur one all these little spokes of what it will look like when you've achieved it what you're doing and then you take one of those and you do an action step for that one and it's like once you get finished then you go back and pick the next beach house i'm going to make my own money to get the beach house the condo i wanted to for me and my kids you know what i mean like, right get super clear and then you book off time and when you give it that time with no deviating like I am going to write from one to two every day and you don't ever take a lunch. You don't ever take a meeting unless it's something with your kids to die hard. That's your time. Next thing you know, you've written your freaking book because you made a schedule, right? You allowed yourself time instead of the thought, I don't know what I want. And I don't, we all know what we really want. We just feel too vulnerable to allow it to be heard out loud. I think. Hmm. And if you don't know, you have then to really think about it. No, then you would <laughs> not think about it. You go from here to here in a meditation with the intention of hearing the whispers of your soul, right? And then you get open to hearing the whispers instead of thinking. Thinking will keep you where you are, not knowing. That's when I think we move to our good shit. Yeah. Move from your head to your heart. This is where it all is. And this is like, like oh, you're going to come to me and ask? <laughs> right on. I got another 10-year dance with you. Yeah. Yeah. This is where you're not good enough to do that. <laughs> yeah. You got to sit right the freak down and keep yeah. on, keep on keeping on. Yeah. Yeah. So it's neat to allow ourselves. Time is relative. Our souls last forever. This is a blip for all of us. We're just here to learn and experience happiness and joy and love. And then we go back with our, with our consciousness expanded. So right now we're expanding at being human. So it's like, oh, how can I be the most human I can be? How can I dive into everything? Like you said earlier this time, in this one, we got one life. One life. Let's fucking live it. Yeah. And you've done a lot with your life. I've done a lot of living. There's no doubt about that. A lot of living. Yeah. And you still have a lot of to, do. to do. Yeah. And I'd say joy-filled living. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah. Tap into the joy, think... what lights you up, and then make a game plan around it. And then, so I can help you with this Paid a lot real. of dues. I'm ready for the payoff. Well, if you are ready, I, I offer this as a gift to you. But most of the time when you offer a gift to someone, they don't do it. So I would like to charge you <laughs> an arm and a fucking leg to help you navigate this new water. I love your honesty. That's great. <laughs> because it is what I give people. Because you, you're not, they you don't, don't show up. You're not going to be an entrepreneur if you don't charge for it. Yeah, too. I'm going to charge you an arm and a leg. <laughs>
because I think you're doing well. I got to Google your. Well, I'm not. Yeah, Google me. That's funny. <laughs> oh, if you think the Wikipedia thing is wrong, wait till you see how much money I make every year. That's really hysterical. No, they put a ton. Oh God, it's hysterical. So are you just saying that so I don't charge you an arm and a leg? No, but it, it really is pretty funny how much people think you make. It's I know, and especially like Dave's in stuff all the time. They're like, uh-huh. you guys must be so loaded. I'm like, I have a lot of help, but we drive the same cars and we don't go on extravagant vacations. Right. But we have private schools and I have a lot of help, which brings me joy. Sure. So, we have to pick our battles, I yes. hear you. Yes. So I'm like, that's that's our money. Yeah. And yeah. it's funny what people perceive, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. like, yeah, well, it's really not. And I've got two girls that well, have one in college and one going to be in college. Are you paying for that or are you splitting it? We uh, do a third, a third, and a third. I want my kids to be responsible for some of it. That's so great. So, um, and being, that's one of the good things about being divorced. You have that. Then you have the other two to split it up. So yeah, theoretically, it's a third, a third, and a third. But that one sitting in your room, in your house with Evie is, um, she's gosh, she's going to change the world. I don't know what she's going to do, but I have a feeling it's going to cost me a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pay for it, but she's going to make a difference. She uh, wants, She's looking at some pretty damn good schools, and she deserves it. She's uh, worked very, very hard for oh, it. Oh, so, how precious. Yeah, so I'll do whatever Isn't it, it weird takes. these people come from you? I know. Or of you? It's like, where did this come and from? And you're looking like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Like Audrey, my 13-year-old, is the mother of our home. Mm-hmm. She's the one like, mom. Did you drink too much last night? Because you really don't look good. Or, you know, she'll say things or she's like, Margo, make sure to hit your 12 o'clock original time, not your new one o'clock time that mom let you get to because you never hit the 12. You need to hit the 12. Isn't that cute? Audrey, and she's like OCD, clean, straight A's on target. And I'm just like, kick ass someone here is. Yeah. We that's... need you, girl. We need you. Mm-hmm. And then the other one is the opposite. Like Ava is my older one she's a fashion marketing merchandising girl and lives in chicago and she's how fun oh she's fun she loves that she's her dad reincarnated socially but um so what she's is she having gonna a blast. do yeah who knows what she's gonna do I don't, she's already doing it well that's what i told her i go honey you'll figure it out i'm not worried about it because you you're doing it you're do- she lives the life she wants to live right not the life that Oh, you have to go to a you know Big Ten school, or you have to be a lawyer, because that's kind of what her dad was kind of. And I'm like, no, let her go to an art school. She's an artist. Yeah, you know. And that one sitting in there wants to do film. I go do film. She goes, but mom, that's not how people make a living. I go, people make a living. Look around you. You're in Hollywood. Yes, that's how people make a living. That's right. Well, maybe I'll become an entertainment lawyer and go in that way. I mean, she's so, you know, wants to do it because she's afraid if she says out loud. I want to do film. It's not tangible. Do you know what I mean for the average person? And what's so funny too is that voice, uh, it's not tangible or it's not real or it's embarrassing, is the voice that keeps filmmakers from being filmmakers. I know, and it breaks my heart. That's why every time she brings it up, that's why I took her out of school to go to Sundance last year. That's why we're going to go to Sundance again this year. There's that's why we're like here. Film sc- school here. Yeah. I mean, she's that's one of the reasons we're here. Because, But she, I think in the back of her head, which I'm glad she's not sitting in here right now. Has to have a safety net. Has to have a safety because she's so programmed, logical too. And she's like, Audrey, she's, you know, everything in its place, straight A's, but this is what I have to do. Well, no, it's not what you have to do. You know, you can get a B and you can go to film school. It's okay. Yeah. I told her that. I go, it's okay. It's like my son, Charlie, he's always hated school. I mean, he's, it hasn't been his strong suit is memorizing stuff and, processing stuff with reading and all that. He's like, I hate this. So we sent him to like a $50,000 a year over the hill, uh, the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Sure. And he half-assed through the first year. And I was like, half-assing for 50 grand? Yeah. And then I said to him, before you renew, I said, what What do you want? Like, why are you half-assing? Because you're not going back there. And he's like, I don't want to go back. I go, what do you want to do? Because I just want to get a job, start making money, and take acting classes. I go, that's what your dad did. Go do that. Yeah. So he got, he has an apartment. He's going to keep it, sharing it with a classmate. And he got a job and he's going to take acting classes. And that's what he should do. That's what you should do. Yeah. You don't have to do you, that 50 grand a year no. to say that you're an actor. Just be one. You don't have to go to college. People think, I didn't go to college. 
I'm going to tell you right now. Well, that's something I, I really not. noticed about you today. I was like, there's yeah, something she didn't off go to college. about her. That girl. Like, oh, does yeah. she not have her BA degree? When my, my, <laughs> my daughter came home the other day, she came home for a month from college. And I said, are you ever going back to Chicago to get a job and start working? Because at your age, I was married and owned my own home. And I go, you can't even balance a checkbook. Is this the older even- one? Yes. I go, come on. That's do something. So funny. Yeah. So you were a survivor and a get it done Yeah. Our kids have a little more of a cakewalk. A well, bit. I kind of did that. I'm a little responsible. Oh, for I'm that. totally responsible. I, well, I am my totally parents responsible did, for that. I'm too. totally responsible. Yeah. I pay, my parents didn't, I didn't work all through high school or college. They paid everything. I mean, I got a job right away when I got out. I finished in four and I was on my own. And that was my dad's thing. I'll pay oh, up to that's here. cool. And I was on my own. I took off and worked and then I moved to LA and got a job waitressing and got <sighs> yeah. another job and bought my first car. And my found kids my have, way. Yeah. My kids have worked since they were 15. They both had jobs, but I don't like, I pay for her apartment. And I mean, they're, yeah. Yeah. So there are things that she's been pretty spoiled. But on. I'm, I too have a housekeeper. And because I didn't want to do all the freaking laundry all the time so and cook all the dinner all the time and all that kind of stuff constantly and do all the emails and do all the driving and do all. It's like, where the hell is my time? So I hired someone to do that. So she does the laundry and she cooks. So my girls are not learning how to do laundry or cooking. Mm. which is the interesting kind of flip side to it. I'm like, come on, the kitchen, girls. We're going to cook. You don't know how to cook. Yes, I do. I just have somebody else do it now because I want to do other stuff. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Even getting them to come learn how to right. do a load of laundry. So they're like, oh, my gosh. I know. But you don't know that you need that. But you know what? I had a therapist once who told me this, and it's really stuck with me. She said, their job right now is to learn and to get good grades and go to school. They'll figure it out. Yeah. They'll figure out how to do That's laundry. Right. They'll figure out, and if you can't stay in their room, close the door. That's their space. That's right. If that's how they want to live, let them live that way. There'll be a day when they wake up and they're going to go, I don't want to live like this anymore. Exactly And right. she goes, you cannot worry about that kind of stuff. And that changed my life. It that's was like, right. It freed you, know you up. What? It did free me up. Because you it's were like, suffering. Boom. I just closed the door. That's right. I know. I don't even look at it. And, you know, that the younger one's pretty, you know, but the older one, she's still a mess. But, you know, it doesn't matter. In fact, when she was home for a month, I finally looked at her and I go, when are you going back? I can't take this mess anymore. This filth, <laughs> this lack of direction. Get the hell out. Do your laundry. Get the hell out. Well, no. Margo, I decided she's really messy. Uh, the 17-year-old and her room is always just like, I'm scared to walk through there. Right. What's lingering under something? Yeah. And so I decided to shut her door because I was having suffering over it and she wasn't. Mm-hmm. So shut the freaking door. So I said, okay, so then I just told her this, you have to bring the dishes to the kitchen and you can't touch my white towels in my bathroom or my robe. Then we're good. Don't touch my towels. Because, you know, my room, everyone takes everything. Everything's lost oh, yeah. and scattered yeah, or broken right, all the time. Right. So I'm like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> so I made to all my kids. We had a family meeting. I showed them my new plush towels I bought for me mm-hmm. with five striped things on the bottom. They're white. No one. If you use my shower and you use a towel, that's fine. They cannot leave my bathroom. And I don't claim shit in this house, kids. You've destroyed everything <laughs> I own. I want these towels. When sure. I come out, I freaking want these clean towels. Where are they? When I say to the housekeeper, where the hell are my towels? And she's like, I-, I don't know. The only room I can't check, you told me, is Margot's. And I go, if Margot has my gosh damn towels, I better. I mean, I'm so livid. I walked to her door. They're sw- wadded up in the corner, <gasps> wet. Uh, and I'm like, Margo, how many times? She's like, get out. All you do is yell at me. I go, because you take my towels. That's all I ask of you. The one thing. Like you, you're breaking your cur- curfew all the time. I'm trying to deal with that and honor what you're going through as still trying to give you boundaries. But my fucking towels. Yeah. Kids. Seriously. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was like, our relationship would change if you uh, wouldn't touch my towels. Right. It's you so have to easy. Find something to jam me with it's every day. So easy. It's Please. so easy. For it's the so hard. <laughs> I think we've done some good work here. Yeah, right on us. <laughs> well, I'm so fucked up. I forgot. <laughs> well, that's the point. Our messy and perfect lives, right? Yeah. What are you working on now? Anything um, that you want to plug or you want people to check out your podcast? Oh, the podcast is on hiatus just because um, when I was doing the podcast, I wasn't working with Bob and Tom at the time. And I had complete control. And we had a lot of fun and we could do it. Then I went back to work with Bob and Tom. Uh, Bob, by the way, is retired. So it's now Tom, Chick, and I and Josh. But we still have the same name. Um, That is owned by a big 
radio company that didn't really enjoy the fact that I used the F word in my shows and they kind of tried to step in and um, we need even though I had, for us. and here's where it gets, I don't even want to go here, but living in the Midwest, you get overlooked a lot. And this company is based in New York. And even though I had 20 to 30,000 downloads every show and I was in the top wow. five on Apple, on iTunes, every like on the new and noteworthy for two years, my wow. show would be right up front. They never looked at me. They had their own podcasting network and wouldn't put me on. And I finally went, what am I beating my head against the wall for? Yeah. I spent all this money on merchandise and hired an assistant and got a producer and did all that. And I go, what am I getting out of this? Nothing. But I mean, I have great relationships and great. I love talking, obviously. Yeah. Um, and I love interviewing people and, and knowing stories. But it seemed like I was just beating my head against the wall and getting nowhere. And I'm sure you felt that way before. So I went back to Bob and Tom. And now I'm in a place where it's really relaxing and fun. And um, I don't know. I think when you get to this part of your career, um, I'm, uh, once again, I'm going to brag about the boards and about <laughs> I was. <laughs> Wait, how many boards are you actually on? Two. Two okay. um, one for St. Vincent's Hospital, the foundation. So we help raise money for the children, basically, and, and indigent, indigents that can't pay because we are a Catholic hospital. So we pay no matter who shows up at our door, we pay. Oh, beautiful. And so the foundation helps pay for that. And then I'm also on their zoo board, and I'm a big Indianapolis Zoo um, proponent. We do a lot. I know people say, oh, you hide behind this, but we do not. We do a lot of conservation work, and we do some really amazing people things. People wait, you're doing something good that brings you joy. Isn't that funny how people can try and oh, even make that bad? Oh, yeah. They try to make it bad every time I eat. Instantly. Yeah. But anyway. All right. The other thing is I was just, I just was selected as one of the most influential women in radio by a major publication in our business. And um, congratulations, thank Kathy. You. Thank you. I, I was going to say Kathy Lee. Yeah, people say that to Are me you on that show, Kathy? Kathy Lee Gifford. Yeah, yeah that's me. I'm yeah, like, I drink a lot of white wine. <laughs> I'll tell you something. Yeah. She's got a new commercial campaign out that I scratched my head. I can't quite figure out what's happening. What is she She's, doing? Remember when she did the cruise ship? She's like, sure. yeah, kind yeah. Of you and me. Yes. Now she's doing that with like a computer or a, a guy who comes to fix up her Does house. Does she not have enough? You know, we're going to get this door now, you and me. <laughs> I'm like, what in the fuck is happening? Uh, yeah. I don't love myself enough to be on TV just to be on TV. I can't imagine doing a commercial just... Why does she need to do that? Because they probably paid her $2 million. That's what I'm saying, though. I, I would do it that for that. Do you all? Oh, hell $2 yeah. $2 million is a lot. You think they paid her $2 million? I made it up. I'd have no concept oh. of, of money that way. I think she gets... She just likes seeing herself on TV. She missed it. She's been off TV for a while. Well, wait a second. If someone goes, hey, you're getting kind of up there, right? Because yeah. I looked at her face kind of closely while I was yeah, trying to figure out the thing. She's got 70, stuff probably. going on. And she's like, oh my gosh, you want me to do that? Well, that's true too. Singing. That's good for us older women. Fixer man guy. Yeah. Of course I'll, I'll do it. That's a lot. That's really good for us older but women. But it wasn't like she was going on going, if you want to sell your soul, you know what I mean? She was doing right. something that might help someone. That's true. And making money. Yeah. And she gets to sing and sashay around, which I know she loves. Yeah. It was a win-win for her. I wonder what, yeah. Because when you retire, I can't imagine what it must be like. Like, we, you were just talking about that. What do I want to do next? I mean, retirement is not. You don't have to retire. You could do that too. Well, no, 90, no, no. Right? I don't have sit, to retire. You can just right. sit in there and talk. Yeah. That's the great thing about radio. Is people don't have to see you. No, because you're cute. You should be seen. I'm glad we're on you the YouTubes and the Facebooks. Oh, this is weird for me to be on a podcast that's on TV. I know. It's great. I had a couple people on and they were like, well, this is good for all the people who are your fan. Look at her sweet little oh, dimples and smile yeah. and sassy swagger. Right. Um, I have a very good job right now. Things are really good right now. Life is really good. Isn't that great? Yes. Yes. Doesn't and I'm not. Feel good? And you know what? I'm I'm enjoying every single moment of it. And you're not sabotaging as hard because it's good. So right. things are coming up, but not derailing you. Yeah, trying really hard not to sabotage. And I like that your guy says little things like anxiety party girl. What was it called? <laughs> oh, I have event anxiety. I have event anxiety. Event anxiety. <laughs> yes. When I was getting really drunk for a while, my doctor said, I think you have social anxiety. Mm. It's like, how funny, because I love social events. But maybe my inner child was nervous so I would have a couple of cocktails before I got there and then I'd have two there and then I was three sheets to the wind 30 minutes into 
whatever was happening. Well, we're a lot of like you oh and I. God. <laughs> like, I'm going to have a couple just to loosen up. I think I'm too loose. Yeah. Oh, shit. She's in the splits. And then when you get doing that, then it's like, you for, oh, yeah, I have another, sure, I have another drink. I'm fine. Oh, it's yeah. so yes. the right decision in the yes. moment. <laughs> <laughs> I can still talk. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. So that's been my thing that I've struggled with and learned from and uh haven't given up, but I'm finding I'm not using it to hurt myself or derail myself as much. Yeah, I try to stick with the two and done philosophy. That's kind of my Do you have rule. two right off the bat? Mm, no, it depends get your buzz on, the on situ- and then depends on the situation. If I get my buzz on early, I'll, I'll keep going. I can't. Oh, so you have to wait. So I got to kind of slow. Sip on bubbly water. Yeah, I got to do one and then sip on some club soda and then, Oh, yeah. you do one and then I like I to try. do two back to back for the maximum effect. Really? Yeah. See, well, if I, I do, get my buzz. If I do that, then I'm done because then I'll keep going. Yeah, I me too. Maybe that's, <laughs> maybe I got to put some water in between. <laughs> try it. it Today, that's what I'm learning. Yeah. Well, we're all learning. We're all continuing to learn. But I forget once I have one to do the water. Oh, I want my whistle. So it tasted good. Yeah. And now I'm into like, I'll have Tito's Martini up. Would you muddle some jalapeno and a little bit of strawberry in that? Put something spicy on the rim. They're like, sure thing. And I'm like, this is delicious. <laughs> I feel like I'm a mixologist. It tastes mm-hmm. good on my lips. And it's making me feel warm inside. What could be wrong? I'll take another. <laughs> <laughs> what could be wrong? What could be wrong? <laughs> Wait and see. Yeah. Wait and see. I am not my best self intoxicated. Me either. None of us are, I don't think. <laughs> no. And I'm kind of ballsy and wild sober. And there it's like, the sky's the limit with my sayings and behaviors. Yeah. Yeah. There's an undue freedom that I should not be experiencing. And then you just say those things that you should never have said mm-hmm. ever. Do I do that mostly all the time? <laughs> but they're really bad. <laughs> Intoxicated. But what I've learned is I'm speaking from my heart. When I talk to people about anything, it's coming from a place of love, not judgment or assholeness. Mm-hmm. And so I feel pure saying it. How others receive what I say is something I can't control. And that's something I've released in caring. Did I piss them off? Did I make it mad? Are they upset? Well, they obviously are. <laughs> like I've stopped doing that because I know what I came with was based in love, how they were perceiving it through their old hurts or their younger self or whatever their story is or how they're feeling. I can't control. So you don't reach out and apologize after? No, because, you know, I forgot five minutes later that I actually did something that might have offended someone. But if I feel it or someone comments on it or I see them or I recall and they don't call, then I immediately go, you know what? I had a weird feeling after I said that. How did you take that? Okay. Because if it triggered you, I'd like to talk through it and make amends. They're like, no, asshole. My mom just died. This just happened with my friend Renee. I was like, Renee, we used to hang out all the time. And I had this with another friend. It's like, we used to hang out all the time and now we're not seeing each other, but you're still doing the things we used to do. We're to... My head was spinning. And uh, she was like, no, remember my mom died three weeks ago? I'm suffering. I'm having oh. a hard time. And I said, thank you so much for being honest, bringing me back to the truth of what is, is you're struggling and I love you. I don't need to bounce my insecurities off of you. You know what I mean? I right. need to go within and be gentle mm-hmm. with myself and support you as you grieve. So it's nice to have people who can say stuff like your boyfriend who can say things and you to him. Right. To keep you on track instead of derailing or getting deeper in the shit. Sure. Yeah. That's important. Very important. <laughs> <laughs> let's go drink. When you said, let's <laughs> pop it open. <laughs> um, when you said it's important, really important, I was just looking at you thinking, what else is really important to you? Oh, my kids, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Just to make sure that you know, they're like you, they're starting to make their own way. And I just want to see them healthy and happy and doing what they are passionate about. That's so beautiful. Because so often mothers especially want them to fit into what they think their, no. their picture of what a young man should do or yeah. a young girl. Or like in my case, I'm very bold and out there. I'm like, just go ask for it. Take it. You get 80% of what you ask for. The answer is yes. And the rest is just no, move on. Like all of these things that I know. And they're like, I am not you. I kind of hope I never am quite like you. <laughs> but I need to do it my way. Yeah. You know? And I think that's what we're learning from each other when they say to me, be normal. Can you be normal at the mall? Like not twirl and dance and talk to people and touch, you know. Can you be normal? I said, well, tell me what that, lo- that looks like. And they said, when we go in the elevator, don't talk to anyone. 
just be normal. Everyone stands <laughs> in the elevator. What do you normally do in the elevator? How, by the time I leave, there's a party and I have loved someone that quick. There's, I'm getting this physical therapy on my shoulder. Yeah. I know every time I go in that elevator, something magical is going to happen. And then I'll see somebody walk up next to me and there's always someone in there with me. And it will just be someone who I judge as or perceive as. And then I say one thing and then they turn and say something funny and then we're belly laughing. But I thought, oh, he's kind of a tight wad. He's, uh -huh. he's not even going to want to talk to me. I'm just going to talk to him anyway. Or the last time I went in, it was packed and I walked in and the door shut and I didn't turn around and I was just like staring at people, smiling at everyone. <laughs> and I was like, all the floors are pushed and I'm the last floor. Who's getting off first so we can make way? And the lady's like, I'm getting off. And I was like, all right. She was like this little Filipino gal, just tiny mm -hmm. little girl in the corner, about 70. And so she's getting off. So we all kind of mush over. And then I said, have a good day, babe. And then the two young guys, about 30, go, who are you calling babe? And I was like, you two. And then we start laughing. <laughs> but it was just like that we all are connected. Yeah. And we all want to be seen and heard. And it's so joyous to not walk in an elevator looking at your phone, to look around you and see the beautiful freaking people who might have a big gift to give you. Not only that, but isolation is such a really big problem in our society right now. Mm. And I think it's getting worse. I think it's, there are so many people that, you know, with the technology that we have created, which can be wonderful, it's doing some horrific things for people. They never leave their home anymore. They don't yeah. have to. They have no work human from, reaction. Work from home used to be a dream. Yeah. But all of a sudden people are there and they don't have a social life, work friends. Right. Places to go work right. parties. Or anyone touching them or saying you're great. Yes. Or, yes. I, Touch is so important. I really, really believe that as well. And, and you think about cars, cubicles. Isolation. Bathroom stalls. Phones. Isolation. Headphones. Yes. Glasses that you have virtual yes. reality. Games that you could communicate yes. with people and not ever see a human being. And it's like, it is so set up for disconnection. It scares me for our kids, kids. It really scares me. And everybody says, oh, you're such a Luddite and, you know, old lady Lee. But I don't care. You know, I think it's important. I think that you, you've got to have face-to-face -face connections. You've got to get off your phone and you have to have friends and you have to get out and you have to talk to people and have conversations. And Yeah, you have to scary. be seen. And, be and heard and heard and felt and touched. that story i'm sure you saw it, it stuck with me forever is the little old lady who was having dinner by herself in a little barbecue joint and i think it was somewhere in the south and these four football players from some university were sitting at the table next to her or across from her and they saw her sitting there by herself and one of the young men went over and said would you like to join us for dinner and it went viral the video went viral the story went viral and it was the sweetest and now this old woman who had no one in her life didn't talk to anybody, has these four boys come to her house once a week and have dinner with her. And, and it's just that's because changed her life. Those guys saw her. Exactly. And had compassion. Yes. And get over here. Like, no one should be alone. Right. And then she was able to receive the gift. Exactly. And sit down and said, oh, no, thank you. Because a lot of people are set in their ways as they get older, especially if they're alone. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. I always eat at this table and I read this and I have my, oh, and I yes. go, and this is my time. Right. No, thank you. Right. She was like, all right. She was and they grateful. both got gifted. Yeah. Isn't that precious how yeah. simple it is? That's one of my big things it was when is not when I see people alone or I'm kind of like you. I'm not as but I will say hello or I hope you have a nice day anytime I'm in, in, interact with anyone and yeah. in the, because just a smile or I hope you have a great day makes a person feel good. And that may be the only time anyone says anything nice to them all day. And I think like that because I know it's important. What's well, funny because I don't even think about it. I know I do know that I found out who I am and why I'm here. I'm a bright light, temporarily housed in this earth suit mm -hmm. that I like to see is pulling out a little more every day. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I know it used to not stick, and now it's just still there like a horn. I have to putty it back in. But um, and that I um, I'm here to shine my light, and just having that knowing, I don't have to do anything anymore. So all I have to do is show up who I am which is shining yeah. my light and sharing it. And then it causes a little fun party. And then someone, you know, usually every once in a while says, you made a big difference by smiling at me or by talking yes. to me or passing me that note. So don't talk. Don't let your kids talk you into being normal. Don't talk to strangers. Yeah, screw that too. Um, I know. I was just thinking Jack Wagner for oh. some reason. <laughs> Kissing you is not General what I Hospital. Had oh, God, yeah. yes. <laughs> He's good stuff. 
Um, yeah, so my kids, but I think I'm showing them of course. how to step out and yeah. how to be fearless and how, and then they're showing me that they're doing it just the way they need to do it mm -hmm. and to kind of surrender to who they are and embrace it. Right. And you said that a minute ago, that you are seeing who they are and uh, wanting that to be who they are, what I they're doing. I want to encourage them. I want them to be who they are. I don't, yeah, yeah don't. And I'm, I'm like, I don't care if you go to college or not. I don't either. Our system is you sit silent at a desk, memorizing other people's work. The best memorizer wins. Boring. Right, I agree. We're not learning who the hell you are, what your gifts are, mm -hmm. how to uncover all the shit that's been mucked on you and thrive. Yeah, so I'm, I, I'm just like this. And they're like, they call me kind of a mom. Because they're like, you're not hovering over us. You're not yelling when we miss curfew. You're not. No, we're not. You're not even running over when we're like, we fall down and we cry. And I was like, no, I'm just here for you, waiting to see how you're doing. And you know what the term for I us can is? Assist you. For panda moms. Have you heard that term? No. Panda moms. It's like, get out, go, go do your thing. You know, I'm here, but I don't need to hover. I don't need to be the tiger mom. I don't need to be the parent, you know, the But if somebody fucks parent, with you. Yeah. <laughs> You don't want to mess with Wolf a panda. Wolfman or whatever his name was. Well, you don't want to mess with a panda either. Yeah, that's why I think they yeah. got the big ass one swipe and you're right, gone. Right, right. So I just say that to my kids. I used to just swipe and then they're like, you've ruined everything. Now the teachers are all mad at me. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> so now I say, I don't even get like my twitch or my, when they tell me something that's upsetting, I say, talk it through with me. Because a lot of times when you just hear yourself talk, you can start to navigate yourself. And let me know if you need me to step in. Like, I'm, I got you. And they're like, please don't. And it's hard for me not to sometimes. Yeah, but. But they're learning how to handle it themselves. That's yeah. good. That's good. Look how much time we've talked. We've probably. How talk. much time do we have? Um, we're, we're past the time. Oh! <laughs> Why didn't you give me a hand signal? I you Did you notice that I tried to do that? I go, yeah, I oh, we've done a lot of good okay, work well, here. Okay, I have to plug. <laughs> Subscribe to this now if you haven't. Yes. Watch her on this because she's amazing and darling. Oh, or tune you. in. Oh, the Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Tom Show com. The Bob and Tom Show. Or it's Bob and Tom Show com. We have apps and you can listen anywhere, anytime. So whatever, it's all free. And do and that after have, you. Listen yeah, to my after podcast. you do, at least. Yeah, I, I really don't have that much to say. What else were? Yes, you do. <laughs> what else were you going to say? You've only been doing it for twenty years. Bless your heart. I think you got some stuff Maybe to 40, say. But go on. <laughs> really? Well, I started in high school, so, so you can never know. again say I, I don't really have anything to say. Because that's no, a I joke. Always oh, you to always do. I love it. That's why I got engrossed girlfriend gab with yeah, you. Forgetting that there was some sort of a time frame. Yeah, I know. I feel bad. Oh, no. Well, I was trying to be a producer, too. I looked at my watch. And I go, oh, my gosh. We're and then I was hour. offended. My younger self was like, fuck her. She's looking at her watch. Well, because Is she out of the moment. No, and then because I was like, I'm well, a podcaster. She's like, you're way over. Oh. I'm like a podcaster. And I'm like, I thank think you. She's somebody is taking control here. <laughs> I think ben. she's well over her time limit. I'm sorry. Um, well, you can edit it down, down to an hour for YouTube. It'll be I'm good. so honored you're here. I am so glad to be here. Thank you for wonderful. fitting this into your tight, short trip here. Oh, I wouldn't have missed it. And I would you like- You know how I feel about you. You are a you are a bright light. You're a very special person. And it's not a coincidence that we met three or four years ago. And no. I'm so glad we did. Me too. And um, we will continue to grow with each other. Yay! Yay! And Estelle, if you want to pull out what it is and make a game plan for it, okay. when you feel open to that, I am here for you. And she's not just here for me. She's here for you, too. I'm here for you, too, guys. If you need a little yes. extra coaching, reach out to me through www.leigh.la. That's my go. website. You yeah. can click schedule a free consultation or some. I don't know what I offer on there, but there's something for you. <laughs> um and that's it. Also, don't forget about my, I want you to come. What? I Where? really want you what? to come. Both of you. Where are we going? Um, I have a two and a half day workshop in LA, October 18 through 20, where we're going to get in there and pull stuff out and rearrange and really uh, unleash ourselves hmm. to live all of us without holding ourselves back in any arena. It's good stuff. I want you to come. I'll see what I can do. Yeah. Let's just get that in your calendar. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, sweetheart, for coming. Thank I love you. you. Love you. Love, love you. you too. And now I want to hold you in my arms. <laughs> okay. We'll do that off camera. <laughs> Sweaty. I am. You, you did your job. It's work. It's work. Yeah. <laughs>